And now for the Monero development segment. Uh, <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> hey, how are you guys doing? Good, What's good. Up, how are you? Long time. Doing pretty long good. Time. <laughs> can you um, hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, I'm, cool. I'm sure. All right, awesome. Uh, well, well, that well, well, yeah, so, so we should say uh, Digun reached out to us and I, we had him on the show like uh, two two weeks ago. He was talking about Anon Shop, uh, which I think is awesome. <laughs> And then he reached out. He's like, hey, what do you think of adding a segment where we talk about the weekly updates in Monero development? He's like constantly listening in on the chatter. He's got the the skills to understand what's going on. And I was like, hell yeah, that's that's amazing. So take it away. Take man. it away, I, my I friend. I love this. This is fantastic. Oh, hi. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hi, I'm D Goon. And um, this week in the Monero development was very interesting. We got a bunch of overflow from the whole uh, Bitcoin NFT space. So this um, this week has been very interesting. Let's get into it. And here's just a quick overview of like very high level, some things that happen. You got Further Wallet, which is a great wallet. It offers like things like coin control, get some updates. P2P pool got some updates also. And there were some general Safaris so and Jamatis update stuff. But the biggest thing was definitely the biggest debate was the add a size limit to TX extra in the transaction pool, which was definitely the biggest thing. And that's, I'm going to spend most of my time talking about that. So the hot topic was the fact that Monero does not limit the amount of data that you can embed in the blockchain via the TX extra um, functionality. This has been abused by people and people have placed entire PDF, PDFs, files, and other things onto the chain. And this use of TS Extra hurts Monero's privacy and clogs the blockchain. And pretty much this is like just how you can embed that into a Bitcoin transaction. You can do the same thing with a Monero transaction. It's not as easy to do because Monero's outputs are not public, but you can still, for example, throw um, I'm so excited for Monerotopia onto the Monero blockchain, and that will be stored on the Monero blockchain forever. Well, that, that should be allowed. I mean, at least the, we should at least allow that one, but, but nothing else. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Doug has a strong opinion. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> that was a joke. That was a joke. Uh, I, I totally miss. I totally missed the um the debate here. Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't tune in, but I heard it got kind of pretty heated. Right? There was uh, a <laughs> narrow boo. I think was throwing some strong language around to other respected <laughs> people in the community. Yeah, there was. Um, I feel like that comes with any. I, honestly, I'm surprised it's not worse because anyone can join and anyone can comment. Right? There's no filtering i don't think they censor anyone so yeah for being completely open to the community it, it was pretty tame but yeah it, it, it got very heated some people talked about how they question the process like how open is the monero's dev process is, is it just a core team mm. dominating the space or things like that but that's like i guess more political mm -hmm. but it, it definitely that talk was definitely there <laughs> yeah, we, we I interviewed uh, Sergey, um, mm. the guy who created P2 Pool. So we talked about it a little bit this week on the show because mm -hmm. he's saying that's one of the you know like P2 Pool for example kind of relies on TX Extra to, to function. So like to completely deprecate it, he, there would have to then be some other solution there for that. Just as an example of like how it's used, uh, you know, in positive ways. Um, so where where do you see kind of consensus going on this? Oh, um, that would be on the this slide here. Oh, okay, so don't I guess, throw you off. Go ahead, do, do your thing. Go through your oh. motions. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. you're good. I just want to go in and say that this isn't a new issue. For example, there was a pull request placed on the Monero repo uh, by another dev who basically said we need to get rid of this. And in 2020, Fluffy Pony was like, I'm perpetually worried about someone wanting to pack stuff into TS Extra unnecessarily. So, mm -hmm. But that um, pull request didn't really go anywhere. So I guess people sort of forgot about it but like all the bitcoin stuff sort of brought it back up to the surface and someone was like hey people can put arbitrarily large amounts of data on the monero blockchain we should probably address this issue before we get something like monero ntf or something like nfts or something like that and as far as the solutions go there there are i would say like four main ones right so you can pretty much say let's get rid of all the transaction data like tx extra and that's attractive because it cuts down on the chain size. Because right now, every Monero transaction uses this um, transaction extra to pretty much add like a dummy uh, payment ID into it. 
So is, is that that method is a little outdated, but it's it's there so that everyone's transaction looks the same, right? Because if one someone's transaction sticks out, then that can hurt privacy. So right now, um, currently, how Monero works: if you're sending just um a regular transaction, you have a payment ID that's in the TX extra already. Mm -hmm. And someone commented in the chat that that's really bad because you're pretty much paying for this feature that you're not really using, right? Mm -hmm. So that was one opinion on that. And number two is to cap this data. Like Bitcoin does it indirectly by capping the block, the block data, right? I think the biggest block you can be is I think like four megabytes right now. But Nero doesn't have any block size cap due to dynamic blocks. But I think it's good. But in theory, you can shove an entire PDF onto the Monero blockchain, which has happened in the past. So number the number two consensus was to cap this data. You would limit to maybe like one kilobyte, and you would say, oh, you can put any data you want here. It could be one kilobyte tap, um, capped, or the network won't accept it as a consensus rule. And number three is make every transaction have similar looking data, which is sort of what they do now, but they also want to add a cap to that also. Like Zcash does this. They pretty much put data there and it's capped and it's encrypted and every transaction has it. Am I, am I moving too fast? <laughs> no, 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 no. Three sounds pretty good to me. Yeah, I think yeah. a lot of people would agree. And then number four is just leave the, this feature as is, which was more popular than you would think. Because the argument for this one is, is that if you're trying to prevent people from putting data onto the blockchain, they will just do something else that's more inefficient and worse for the blockchain. Like let's say you cap it to a certain size, right? Well, now, if, if I want to put a PDF on the on the blockchain, I would simply do it over like 20 transactions, right? Mm. Which would be worse for the blockchain because now you have 20 decoy, you have 20, 20 um, transactions that can hurt the privacy of Monero and it costs a bunch of money and it clogs up the chain more versus just letting them do it in one transaction and getting that data out. But that was an opinion that was given. And then... um. Most people, like I said, lean towards number two, and then number one when so the Safaris hard fork happens, mm -hmm. and, and and these issues are really hard to address with Monero because um, Monero can't Monero really you can't really have a soft fork in Monero because it hurts privacy, right? Because a soft fork is basically when you have a fork in the chain, and then one chain does one thing and one side of the chain does the other thing. <clears throat> we have that because that would harm um, um, privacy. You can't really have a hard fork either because that would pretty much be like sort of commandeering. Like you come in and it's very intensive, right? Hard forks take months to plan for. You have to update all the, all the wallets. Like Cake Wallet will have to update their nodes and stuff like that. So you can't just have a hard fork. Everyone get their stuff together what, what, unless it's planned. So the, the deal right now is to have a short-term fix where the transaction size is limited by the, the pool size, essentially. So basically, the, they would, the way the likely solution is going to be that when you broadcast a transaction, the nodes will limit how big that transaction's TX extra can be. And that's a really smart solution because it avoids a hard fork and it avoids a soft fork. And that's pull request 8733. So that's going to be the more likely solution. But Wait, like, explain that again. Like, just uh, summarize that again, what that pull request is. What, well, what? the pull request basically says, if you're a node on the network, do not broadcast a transaction that has a TX extra size that's more than 1,000 bytes, basically. Mm -hmm. okay. And it's not a consensus rule, right? So you don't you don't need a soft fork. You don't need a hard fork. No one has to upgrade all their... No one, even if some people don't upgrade, that's fine. Because it's like if you have half of the nodes upgraded, that's fine because it the transaction probably won't propagate through the network so that's a pretty good solution but like in the long term people are still debating what happens between these major four options and whatever is aside will probably be rolled into the so, so far as hard fork so that, that's going to be take a lot of work a lot of coordination so they're just going to pretty much delay any major change to that solution right because uh, because there'll be major changes happening anyway at that time or because it also yeah. makes sense to do it at that time for other reasons is there other reasons why it makes sense to do it with Seraphis or uh... oh yeah because, um because it's also easier but there's also um people working on different techniques to encrypt that data and work on different things like that there's several proposals going around where like oh we can do this with this data we can do that with this data we can encrypt it this way get these advantages so it just needs a little more work also and the fact that it's also going to be much easier to throw all these fixes in but this doesn't really 
doesn't really solve the problem right because someone could still mine a block and pretty much put whatever they want on the Monero blockchain. So this only prevents it from being propagated through the network. But if you're a miner, you can put whatever transaction you want in the block and, and mine it, and it's up to you, right? So this doesn't really prevent people from mining, especially since Monero is much more accessible to mine than something like Bitcoin. Because if you're in Bitcoin, right, you got mining pools. You, If you're one individual, you can't really mine your own block or get something into the block because the mining pool decides what goes in there. But Monero is much more decentralized. So you can run a computer or a miner and then you can put your NFT onto Monero. You can put your PDF on it and just wait until you mine a block and get lucky, essentially. So it's not a perfect fix, but you know when you're trying to do decentralized development like this, I think it's the best one we have right now. <laughs> What would you say are the best arguments for not completely deprecating it? For like the reason I said, like things like P2 pool or, you know, just, you know, if you want to do stuff like add it to, to Thor chain, right? There was no easy mm -hmm. way to do. I think TX extra might have been involved in that. Pro Is, are, are those basically the reasons why you wouldn't want to remove it? Because it, it, it allows for increased development and integrating with Monero, TX extra? I would say that's one one argument but I, I think the more convincing argument at least for me is that people would just do other things that would be detrimental to the network right because the, those devs are really smart so they can always find a way to work around if you remove tx extra they won't be impacted too much but it'll take some d development they'll be back up and running but the the big issue with, if you remove it right and, and i want to put a pdf on the on the network i will simply make i will simply find some other way to do it. i might embed it in outputs which would be really bad right because now your your wallet will be using my outputs which would violate your privacy even more so so there's not uh, against a determined attacker. If there's not really anything you can do to make it impossible, you would just be making it very hard for them, which might work also, right? Because I don't know how determined the attacker is to put like PDFs on Monero's blockchain. So that might work also, but it's still up in the air. No one knows for sure. Awesome, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this this will definitely be a, a question uh, asked at the at the panel on on day one. <laughs> we have all oh, the devs yeah. up there on stage. I'm trying to get maybe Seth for privacy to 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 run that panel, to host that panel. That'd be cool. Oh yeah, that'd be great. I love Seth for privacy. He wasn't in this chat, unfortunately, but he makes really great stuff. He has a really um, balanced view of the issue. He's really good at, at talking about different sides and different opinions like that. Yeah, kind of kind of <laughs> like you, man. You're, uh, <laughs> yeah. you're, you're, you're you're like the new Seth for privacy over here. Oh, um, that's skills, a man. skills. Good you're, you're good at, you're good at uh, breaking it down, understanding it, and explaining it to others. That's the <laughs> a very rare skill to have. Uh, thank you so much. Any any other things you want to throw out there for this week? For or we um, cover the topic. If we basically cover the topic, I would recommend anyone that has questions or drop them below because it's really important that people don't see this as like, oh, devs talk about that. As thus, I don't have an opinion, but I think we are Monero, right? The people make Monero, so you should be informing in your process. This is considered like a democratic process, right? So please ask questions. Please, I, I can drop links to the GitHub issue. If you have any issues you should have an opinion about what happens on monero if you use monero so and you shouldn't let your the fear of not being technical enough get in the way of that because there's so many ways to explain it so please reach out if you have any questions this is important for the entire community everyone should be able to participate fantastic man and yeah hopefully <laughs> these weekly uh dev reports help people in that in that respect mm -hmm. All right. All right, we're going to yeah. move on just because yeah, we have a jam-packed show. <laughs> Thank Obviously, you, as usual, yeah. Yeah, stick around if you can. If you can't, no worries. I will. If you can, please do. All right, awesome. Thank you so much. Awesome job today. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Bye.